No Country for Old Men, by Cormac McCarthy, 2005. Page 1. Synopsis. Set in our own time along the bloody frontier between Texas and Mexico, this is Cormac McCarthy's first novel since Cities of the Plain completed his acclaimed, best-selling border trilogy. Llewellyn Moss, hunting antelope near the Rio Grande, instead finds men shot dead, a load of heroin, and more than $2 million in cash. Packing the money out, he knows, will change everything. But only after two more men are murdered does a victim's burning car lead Sheriff Bell to the carnage out in the desert, and he soon realizes how desperately Moss and his young wife need protection. One party in the failed transaction hires an ex-Special Forces officer to defend his interests against a mesmerizing freelancer, while on either side are men accustomed to spectacular violence and mayhem. The pursuit stretches up and down and across the border, each participant seemingly determined to answer what one asks another, how does a man decide in what order to abandon his life? A harrowing story of a war that society is waging on itself, and an enduring meditation on the ties of love and blood and duty that inform lives and shape destinies, No Country for Old Men is a novel of extraordinary resonance and power. Scanners note, this author has his own style of unorthodox dialect and punctuation. No Country for Old Men, by Cormac McCarthy, 2005. ISBN 10 colon 0 x Copyright Copyright M71, Limited 2005. The author would like to express his appreciation to the Santa Fe Institute for his long association and his four-year residence. He would also like to thank Amanda Urban. Chapter 1 1.1 1 .1. I sent one boy to the Gash Amber at Huntsville. One and only one. My arrest and my testimony. I went up there and visited with him two or three times. Three times. The last time was the day of his execution. I didn't have to go but I did. I sure didn't want to. He'd killed a 14-year-old girl and I can tell you right now I never did have no great desire to visit with him let alone go to his execution but I done it. The papers said it was a crime of passion and he told me there wasn't no passion to it. He'd been dating this girl, young as she was. He was 19. And he told me that he had been planning to kill somebody for about as long as he could remember. Said that if they turned him out he'd do it again. Said he knew he was going to hell. Told it to me out of his own mouth. I don't know what to make of that. I surely don't. I thought I'd never seen a person like that and it got me to wondering if maybe he was some new kind. I watched them strap him into the seat and shut the door. He might have looked a bit nervous about it but that was about all. I really believe that he knew he was going to be in hell in 15 minutes. I believe that. And I've thought about that a lot. He was not hard to talk to. Called me sheriff. But I didn't know what to say to him. What do you say to a man that by his own admission has no soul? Why would you say anything? I've thought about it a good deal. But he wasn't nothing compared to what was common down the pike. They say the eyes are the windows to the soul. I don't know what the eyes was the windows to and I guess I'd as soon not know. But there is another view of the world out there and other eyes to see it and that's where this is going. It has done brought me to a place in my life I would not have thought I'd have come to. Somewhere out there is a true and living prophet of destruction and I don't want to confront him. I know he's real. I have seen his work. I walked in front of those eyes once. I won't do it again. I won't push my chips forward and stand up and go out to meet him. It ain't just Bane older. I wish that it was. I can't say that it's even what you are willing to do. Because I always knew that you had to be willing to die to even do this job. That was always true. Not to sound glorious about it or nothing but you do. If you ain't they'll know it. They'll see it in a heartbeat. I think it is more like what you are willing to become. And I think a man would have to put his soul at hazard. And I won't do that. I think now that maybe I never would. 